Most traders think they are fighting the market. In reality, they are fighting the machine that runs it. Perpetual futures, or perps, have become the beating heart of crypto speculation. Billions in volume every day, no expiry dates, infinite leverage. But behind that freedom sits a complex system of contracts, vaults, and liquidation engines, quietly deciding who gets wiped and who walks away. Today we are opening the hood on the machine, how perps actually work, who eats the losses, and how EDL chooses its victims, and why DEX design can decide whether you survive the next crash. This is the hidden mechanics of perp DEXs. Perpetual futures or perps are synthetic contracts. They don't settle like traditional futures, and they never expire. You are not buying the real Bitcoin or ETH, you are entering a contract that tracks its price. Every trade on a perp exchange is a zero sum. Each dollar a trader wins comes from someone else's losses. There is no delivery or ownership, just exposure between longs and shorts. If longs win $10 million, shorts collectively lose $10 million. The exchange stands in the middle to balance accounts. Even at 1x leverage, you are not buying Bitcoin. You are holding a synthetic long. You can't transfer or withdraw it, because it doesn't exist. You can only withdraw your collateral, usually USDT or USDC. So when people say I'm long one Bitcoin on Arbitrum, the reality is you don't own Bitcoin. You own a USDT-backed contract that mimics it. That's why you can't transfer Bitcoin from a perp account only your stablecoin balance. Here's the trick that makes perps work. Funding rates. Since there is no expiry, funding payments keep perps prices aligned with spot. When perps trade above spot, longs pay shorts. When perps trade below spot, shorts pay longs. Funding is a self-regulating incentive, like a thermostat, that adjusts market behavior. Too many longs, funding turns positive, and paying to hold, some close. Too many shorts, funding turns negative, longs get paid, balance restored. Funding is a soft mechanism. When it fails, the hard mechanisms take over, liquidations and ADL. Let's clear up a myth. If I buy $1 billion of Bitcoin perps, Bitcoin's price will go up. Not directly. You are not buying real Bitcoin, only contracts. No one in the spot market sees your bids. But you can cause indirect effects through arbitrage. Heavy perp buying pushes perp price above the spot. Funding turns positive. Arbitrageurs short the perp, buy spot Bitcoin and collect funding. Their spot buying nudges the real Bitcoin price higher. So yes, a big perp long can lift the spot, but only indirectly through arbitrage. If no arbitrage exists, the perp price just drifts while spot stays flat. When an account falls below maintenance margin, the liquidation engine acts. Partial liquidation sells part of the position, or full liquidation, closes it at the bankruptcy price. If the market gaps too fast and liquidation can't execute above zero equity, the account becomes insolvent. Who takes the loss? In centralized exchange, insurance fund first. If that runs out, auto-deleveraging or ADL. In decentralized exchanges, depends on design. LP-based models, GMX, Drift, Hyperliquid, the liquidity pool absorbs losses. Order book DEXs, DYDX, insurance fund, then ADL as last resort. In short, if a trader blows up, someone or some pool must take the other side. Insolvency doesn't disappear, it just changes owners. ADL is the last firewall. When liquidations fail and the insurance fund is drained, the system force close profitable positions to cover the losses of liquidated traders. Formula is ADL score equals unrealized PNL divided by notional times notional divided by equity. Meaning the more profitable and leveraged you are, the higher your ADL rank. One leverage winner can offset many losers. 
task. So if you up 500% or 50x leverage, you are the first in line to be cut. Ideal closes your position near the mark price, a fair value derived from spot and index leverages, not the last volatile trade. So you keep your profit but lose your exposure. If the market keeps running your direction, you're out of the move. This mechanism became controversial after the October 10th liquidations. Many traders farming hyperliquid or lighter points were running delta neutral strategies, holding a long on one exchange and a short on another to stay balanced while earning DEX points. But when ADL hit one side on their trade, say the short leg, their hedge collapsed. Suddenly, they weren't neutral anymore, and even though they thought they were being cautious and sophisticated, they were exposed to massive directional loss. Ironically, the system punished not only reckless speculators, but also these so-called smart farmers, who thought they were gaming the system for a safe, juicy airdrop, only to get wiped out instead. Why publishing ADL data matters? Publishing ADL rankings is about transparency and user trust. Traders need to know how close they are to being auto-deleveraged, especially during extreme volatility. Yet many platforms still hide it. After the October 10th liquidation cascade, when billions were wiped on Binance, Hyperliquid and Lighter, many users learned about ADL for the first time, often the hard way. Overnight, show us the ADL list became a common demand across trader communities. Who publishes ADL data today? Hyperliquid doesn't show ADL ranking. DYDX also doesn't show, but publishes liquidation and insurance stats. GMX and Drift, no UI for ADL ranking. Rely on LP vaults and insurance to absorb losses. AVO displays ADLQ. Paradex doesn't show. Here's where CXs shine. Binance, Bitget, and Bybit each have UI elements to display how close your position is to being deleveraged. In short, ADL transparency is now a benchmark of integrity. After October 10, traders stopped accepting just trust us. They want to see the actual numbers. Let's break down how DEXs like Hyperliquid or GMX differ from centralized exchanges like Binance. On DEXs, liquidity comes from LP vaults such as HLP or GLP. These pools fund traders' margin and take the other side of every trade. When traders win, LPs lose and vice versa. Everything's on-chain and transparent. You can literally see the vault balance, yield and TVL in real time. On C-axis, everything happens inside one closed system. Market makers, custody and insurance are all under the same roof, meaning the exchange itself is your counterparty. It's faster and deeper in liquidity, but far less transparent. So the trade-off is clear. DEXs offer transparency and modular solvency, while CXs offer speed and convenience at the cost of trust. After recent liquidation chaos, that line between the two models has never been more important. Let's walk the timeline from the first perpetual swap to today's high-speed DEXs. BitMEX 2014 to 2019, founded by Arthur Hayes, Ben Dello, and Samuel Rhee, created the first perpetual swap, a futures contract with no expiry, balanced by funding rates, introduced early liquidation engine and insurance fund. The innovation was 24-7 derivatives without settlement. Weakness were custodial, opaque, sudden ADL events. BitMEX was the prototype, every design since builds on it. Then Binance Futures in 2019 scaled BitMEX's model to retail, added dozens of assets and integrated perps into a broader CX stack. Innovation was liquidity depth and mass access, trade-offs, full centralization custody, order book and liquidation all internal. Then DYDX 2020 to 2023, founded by Antonio Juliano, brought BitMEX style perps to DeFi using StarkX, later its own Cosmos chain. Innovation was decentralized order book and API connectivity. Limits relied on sequencer, semi-centralized. 
proved DeFi perps could perform like CXs. GMX v2 in 2021 replaced order books with a liquidity provider vault as counterparty. Innovation were Oracle-based pricing, LP yield, no external market makers. Limits were Oracle lag and capped throughput. Showed AMM-style perps can function if Oracle's hold. And now Hyperliquid in 2023 was founded by Jeff Yan, runs on a custom L1 with a full on-chain matching and HLP vault liquidity. Innovation is transparent ADL and insurance logic with near instant execution. Edge is CX level speed, full transparency. Another one is Lighter Exchange, founded in 2024, is the next gen high speed order book DEX built on a custom L2, Lighter Chain. Innovations are off chain sequencing, on chain settlement, real time ADL and insurance visibility, aggregated liquidity across venues. Drift Protocol on Solana, founded by Cindy Leo and David Liu. Hybrid order book and AMM with dynamic liquidity and open interest caps. Innovations are Solana native latency, composable risk engine. AVO and Paradex form the new institutional layer of perp DEXs. AVO merges options and perps under one OP stack margin system, while Paradex runs a Starknet based order book integrated with Coinbase for professional traders. Together, they bridge CX grade performance with DeFi transparency, pushing on chain derivatives toward institutional adoption. Each generation solved a new bottleneck. Bitmax invented the product, Binance scaled liquidity, DYDX decentralized it, and GMX replaced market makers with vaults. Hyperliquid and Lighter closed the latency gap and exposed risk math. Drift, AO, and Paradex refine margin systems and cross-chain execution. The race isn't about highest leverage anymore, it's about who manages liquidations predictably and transparently. Open interest and volume reveal market health. Rising open interest and rising volume means new positions, healthy trend. Rising open interest and falling volume means crowding, thin liquidity. Falling open interest and rising volume means unwinds or reversals. Both falling signals that capital is leaving. Danger zones are too much volume and low open interest, churn without conviction. Too much open interest and low volume, crowded positions ready to unwind. Healthy markets breathe, meaning open interest builds, resets and rebuilds as volume stays steady. During crashes, reflexivity, not leverage, breaks markets. Falling Bitcoin reduces collateral value, triggering forced liquidations across alts. That pressure feeds back and worsens the dump. Bitcoin down, collateral shrinks, alts sold, alts dump further, liquidity vanishes. Alts crater faster because they serve as collateral inside cross-margin engines. Possible fixes might be dynamic haircuts, siloed margin options, transparent liquidation ladders, stress path simulations published ahead of time. If builders don't test tail events, they are not building markets, they are building mousetrap. For perp dex designers, non-negotiables are auction first liquidation, seek outside bids before ADL, transparent pre-funded insurance pool, open source ADL math, show user rank, robust multi-source oracles, dynamic risk controls and circuit breakers, reward real liquidity, not churn, life risk telemetry in the UI, separate vault and exchange incentives, Governance bound emergency powers. Next gen perp DEXs will win on trust math, not just fees. For traders, model liquidation prices, not just entries. Watch funding as sentiment. Use isolated margin for volatile alts. Track both volume and open interest. Avoid cross margining illiquid collateral. Trade on venues publishing on-chain liquidation and ADL data. 
Transparency is your only real edge. If you can't explain your venue's liquidation process, you don't understand your risk. Every exchange faces the same crisis question. Save the system or save the users? That's a false choice. If designed correctly, insurance buffers, clear rules, and transparent ADL preserve both. The difference between trust and solvency is planning. Users can tolerate losses, they cannot tolerate surprises. Perps are powerful but unforgiving. They reward preparation, not just intelligence. Design them right and you get resilient markets. Design them poorly and every liquidation wave becomes a bank run. If you trade perps, understand the machine you are trading inside. Learn how your venue handles ADL, funding and insolvencies, because those rules decide who gets paid when chaos hits. I'm Zhenya, follow me on X, link in the description, and subscribe here to learn how the smartest money moves in crypto.